Did you know that 20% of all the cancers diagnosed worldwide and in India are blood cancers? The deadliest form of this blood cancer is something called leukemia. My name is Dr. Isha Kaul. I am Associate Director in the Department of Hematology, Oncology, Bone Marrow Transplant at Max Super Speciality Hospital, Vaishali. And today I am going to be talking to you more about the word leukemia. Although there are uh, hundreds of different kinds of leukemias, broadly speaking, leukemias can be classified into two broad categories, the acute leukemias and the chronic leukemias. Acute leukemias are the most aggressive form of this disease, which present with a very short history and the patients are generally very, very sick at the time of uh, presentation and usually require immediate hospitalization and starting of treatment. The other end of the spectrum is entirely different, something called chronic leukemias, which generally start and build in the body gradually over several months. So the symptoms are quite different and have developed slowly and the patients generally walk uh, to seek an appointment in the outpatient setting and are not very sick. Recognizing and understanding that these two are very different kinds of disorders is extremely important. If you have been diagnosed with leukemia, you cannot compare what is being done to you or done with you to somebody else that you know who has chronic leukemia because the approaches can be very, very different. For chronic leukemia, sometimes the only treatment that is rec uh, required is an oral pill that is taken once a day. Whereas for acute leukemias, the treatment requires prolonged hospitalizations and something called a bone marrow transplant can also be required in some cases. One of the very frequent questions that we are often asked by patients and families suffering uh, from leukemia is that what is the stage of the disease? So unlike cancers of solid organs such as lung, prostate, breast, there is no stage 1, 2, 3, 4 in leukemias. Leukemias are blood cancers and blood is fundamentally a liquid disorder. It's a liquid organ in which the blood circulates throughout the body. So any leukemia is present in all of the body right from day one. It's important to understand because unlike in uh, solid cancers, where for early stage cancers, stage one, two, and sometimes three, surgery is the primary treatment of choice. For leukemias, no matter you know where you are in the disease course, the treatment is always medical. There is no role of surgery in leukemias and as such there are no stage 1, 2, 3, 4. However, leukemias are further classified which is based not on PET scans or CT scans but based on results of a test called a bone marrow uh, biopsy. Samples from the bone marrow which is the hollow organ inside our bones which is the factory from where all blood is made is sent for specialized testing, something called a flow cytometry, molecular tests, advanced genetic tests and these tests help us to narrow down what the precise subtype of one individual patient with leukemia is. And such advanced diagnostics are extremely important so that we can narrow down exactly what is the most suited treatment for each individual patient and we are better able to predict how aggressive the treatment uh, needs to be keeping in mind what the basic nature of the disease is. So no stage 1, 2, 3, 4, but yes, further classification based on molecular tests and genetic tests is how we determine the subtypes of leukemia. Leukemias unfortunately can involve patients from all age groups. Children as young as one year and adults uh, well into their 80s and 90s can be diagnosed with leukemia. Fortunately, especially in the uh, pediatric, in the childhood population, leukemias are extremely treatable. So there is no reason to get disheartened and dismayed if a child is diagnosed with leukemia. Of course, it's a very difficult situation for everybody that is involved. Uh, but there has to be tremendous effort by everyone that is involved because the chances of complete cure, completely getting rid of the disease in the pediatric ch childhood population suffering from leukemia is to the tune of 80 to 90 percent. So if we deploy uh, modern protocols and deploy them well and deploy them in a timely fashion, 80 to 90 percent of children who are diagnosed with leukemia can be completely cured. So this is an opportunity that you know we should not miss 
and there should be no delay in diagnosis and there should be no compromise on how the treatment protocols are administered. At the same time, the goals of treatment can be different in the older population, in which often because of their other comorbidities, uh, treatments such as bone marrow transplant which are required for cure cannot be employed, but at the same time there are uh, treatments which are well tolerated and can be administered to people who are even in their 70s and 80s. There are drugs that are tailor made for uh, specifically this population and even though it may not be cured, it can offer very effective control, improve the quality of life and prolong life even in older patients who are diagnosed with leukemia. So, the goals of treatment can be different, the path is not very easy, but leukemia is not always death sentence. There are treatments that are available, but proper diagnosis and proper management tailor made for the age group and for the subtype of leukemia are very, very important. Even up to uh, the last decade, the treatments that were used for the treatment of leukemia, the medicines, the modalities were often extremely toxic. Uh, this has changed, however, and is changing rapidly. And we, are, we now have immunotherapies, we have targeted therapies that are available that is making the burden of the treatment less painful. Uh, the, if you know these drugs are employed and we use them uh, appropriately, we can still achieve very good outcomes without all the toxicity that is associated with conventional chemotherapy drugs uh, of the last century. As the time goes by, we are hoping that with the use of more and more targeted therapies, we will have to use less of toxic therapies and still be able to increase the fraction of people who can be cured without uh, you know, decreasing their quality of life or giving lot of toxic treatments. So, there is a lot of scientific development in the field of both diagnosis as well as treatment options for leukemia and that there has been tremendous growth uh, especially in the last decade. Uh, and so, it is very important that we educate ourselves uh, to find the most appropriate treatment options for an individual and not lose hope.